Hey guys, I've got a new project that I'm starting that I wanted to share with everyone. I'm doing the Defcorp of Krieg Laser Rapier Destroyer Battery. Um, it's one of the elite choices for both a siege and assault lists. Um, so I've wanted these guys for a while because I've always found I never have enough anti-tank capability uh, and these guys are perfect for the job. The main rapier itself uh, is a kit from Forge World. It comes with a Cadian Guardsman. Um, obviously, I want my Guardsman to be Krieg, so I had one conversion there. The second thing I wanted to do was add a second crewman, because the thing I found with having artillery pieces is it's always really useful to have an extra guy just to basically be a buffer for wounds effectively. So I already known that I wanted to do three rapiers, uh, each one with two crew members. So the most cost effective way to buy this was actually using a Forge World bundle. The bundle doesn't exist anymore, but what it gave you was three of the rapiers, and then it gave you two packs of the Thudgun crew, um, because they could easily be converted up for as crew members. The only issue I had with that is in the rules, it actually states that the crew are engineers, which is why you get the ballistic skill four and you get the four plus armor safe, both of which are really good. Um, so I actually wanted to accurately represent them. So I got the bundle anyway because I knew I'd want some of the arms off the crew members and the rest can be spare. Plus it was slightly cheaper that way to buy the free rapiers. So it was a bit of a win-win. The only downside is I then had to buy some extra models for the engineers. I could have bought a squad which would have only given me five men and the poses would have been all a bit different and random. So what I ended up doing was buying three of the mole launcher heavy weapon teams. So the guys on the right hand side, they're the models that appear on the back of the mole launcher um, tapping into the control pads and the ones on the left are the mole launcher gunners that hold the mole launcher. Now let me just go into a little bit more detail on what I did to modify them to be the rapier crew. So this is the guy that's at the back of the mole launcher. He was actually the original inspiration for this conversion because the way his arms are positioned they actually just like, look like they're tapping on the console because he's doing exactly that on the mole launcher and I figured he'd be the best person to be at the back of the rapier being the main crew member. The only additional thing I did was add some battle damage onto the carapace. Uh, the arms themselves, nothing's changed at all. All I've done is used a bit of thin wire to mount them on here for painting. And then I've also taken the backpack. Now this actually came with the rapier kit who goes on the guardsman. All I've done was take that. I had to slice out some of the plastic that was on the mounting just here just to ensure he's going to fit nicely between these two sections. Uh, so I've already done a test fit, it looks really good. And I'll show you guys what that looks like once it's all painted up. So the other thing that I've done different from normal is the way I've mounted this guy. Normally I would base him on his uh, round base um, and then stick him and several other people onto a strip of cardboard. This is the best sort of way for sort of assembly line painting. I thought I'd do a slightly different way this time. It's something I've seen lots of other people do and the benefit of doing one guy on his own little bit of uh, resin like this is you can just kind of paint up the underside of the legs a bit easier, a bit more flexibility. Um, whether it works, whether I like it, I'm not sure, but I thought I'd give it a go for this little project. So the main downside with using these mole launcher guys is the rear gunner, which is this guy will have identical arms. So I have three models that all look the same, which is why when it comes to the additional crew member, I want to try and make those as unique as possible. So this is M1, he's the guy that's actually holding the mole launcher. Because of that there was a few technical issues, one of which is he didn't have his little light torch section on his armour because that's where the sort of butt of the mole launcher actually goes. So I used a bit of instant mould which allowed me to do a press moulding from one of the other guys. So. So if I just show you this guy, he's got his one there. So I just use a press mold to take a little casting of that that I made out of green stuff, which I then just carefully stuck onto here and then had to fill in some of the edges just because there was a bit of gap. So that was a bit fiddly, uh, but I think it'll be worthwhile in the end. And even though it's probably not as detailed as it should be because it's a molding, it'll, you know, it's not going to be noticeable.
So the two arms were taken from the Fudgun crew kit. Um, the, his left one, he's just got his arm down by his side, and his right one, I've got him holding binoculars. Now the only thing with this is the Fudgun crew has the sort of standard shoulder pads, which are actually different from the engineers, and I wanted to swap these over because I wanted it to be as accurate as possible. It was quite an easy conversion, but you just had to be quite careful. It just involved slicing off the shoulder pads, um, both of the Thudder Gun crew and then using the spare mole launcher arms that I weren't using, taking those off as well, and then just carefully attaching them, uh, making sure the positions are correct. I think overall it was okay, and I added just a bit of battle damage onto that one there. So this is the second one, I wanted a slight variance in the arm position. I still wanted another guy with binoculars, but this guy, as you can see, he's got his arm up in the air as if he's signaling the other crew member. So this is the last one, I decided to do something a little bit different, I didn't really want another set of binoculars, so I gave this guy a shotgun because they're armed with them as well. Uh, this came from the standard engineer kit, I had one uh, spare so I decided to use that. Uh, and then this guy, I went for a sort of pointing arm. So this arm was a little bit more tricky. Um, again, the arm is from the Thud Gun crew. I had a spare shoulder pad, again, from the Mole Launcher guy, so I had to swap those out. But the arm had a different hand position. So what I decided to do was carefully cut out a different hand from one of the other crew members, um, cut out the arm from the Thud Gun here, and swap them over. What I ended up doing was cutting little V shape into the hand so he had like a little socket and then on the arm I drilled in quite a bit with a small drill that just allowed me to create a little crevice that I could sort of slot the hand into so it gives you a nice little seam you can sort of see there where the join is so a little bit of a fiddly conversion on this one but I think it will look really good in the end so when it comes to the rapier there was only one section that I needed to convert up and this was the back panel screen. This is a bit that the crew member is interacting with and the joystick doesn't actually exist, uh, there's just a bit of a hole just there. That's because the Cadian crew member is actually holding it in his hand so it's actually pre-positioned. Um, the idea is that when the crew member is standing next to it um, you can just line them up and or you can glue them in place so it looks like he's actually interacting with it. Now I don't quite have the luxury with my model, so the poses are slightly different. So what I did is I just took a spare bit of resin that I had lying around, um, widened the hole enough just to glue that section in there. What I then did is I had a slightly larger piece, which I cut into a very thin disc and then glued on top. Now once that had dried, I had just used a drill bit to ever so slightly do an indentation. Now that sort of matches the design pretty much as it appears on the Cadian crew member, uh, but now it's a standalone piece. So the only downside in this uh, little project I've found so far is that the three rear gunners are all going to look pretty identical because obviously the body is in a static position and then I'm using the same identical arms for each one. So I have some flexibility in how I position the arms but obviously there won't be too much wiggle room, so I'm pretty sure that all three of those will look pretty identical. And again, with the additional crew members, they're all knelt down. There's not much I can do about that, but at least I've swapped the arms around, so the loads will look a bit more unique. So hopefully each individual unit will look a little bit different from the others. So that's all for now. They're all ready to get painted up. I'll probably skip over the majority of the painting, uh, purely because the painting guides are similar to all the other ones I've done so far so the engineers will be painted up in a similar way to the grenadiers and the rapier will be painted up in a similar way to one of my tanks. I'll get back to you with another video at some point when these guys are painted. Hope you guys have enjoyed this quick video. Uh, keep an eye out for the next one. Until then, take care.